Ah, uh, this desk is just full of rubbish. Uh, I keep telling my colleagues just to put away the bottles and jugs before we start lessons. No, it's all right, Joe. It's okay. It's all right. Um, I'm actually going to be using this a bit later, so don't worry. What? What, for a lesson? Yeah, um, well, I'm talking about liquidity today, and students wanted to know about it, liquidity ratios. Liquidity? I've heard the phrase, but I don't really know what it means. Yeah, well, what we're going to do, um, this, this is some bad stuff here. This is sugary... Nasty stuff, and what I'm going to do is pretend that there is current liabilities. Okay, okay. I'm st I'm still a bit lost here, Mark. Yeah, I mean, um, let's just get rid of some of that. Actually, don't need all that in there. So that there is my current liabilities. Do you know what those are? That's liabil current liabilities. I mean, I've come, I've heard the phrase. I've certainly read it in a in a, in a textbook. Yeah. But I don't actually know what it means. It's basically uh, items the business has to pay. That's items like uh, an overdraft, maybe creditors, uh, you know, people that you owe money to, payables uh, is another term for creditors. And then it's um, current. What's the, why, why, why is the current so important in that phrase? Current means it's got to be paid within a year. And, you know, we've got to have enough current assets to pay for that. And this is what I'm going to look at. This is some nice, healthy liquidity here. Liquidity. I'm going to pour that there. I'm going to call that current assets. Okay, so I've got a nice amount there of current assets to current liabilities. Right, so tell me this, right? Could you not have just poured coke into both of them? Or water into both of them? Why do? You, why is there coke in one and water in the other? Well, the, the two totally different things. So these are items that need to be paid within a year. These are fairly liquid assets. They're things like stock, uh, receivables, cash. They're, they're items that we can soon turn into cash. They're fairly liquid assets. And, what and assets are things that we own, isn't it? That's right. And, and the thing is, the, the textbook says that we should have more of these than these. In fact, they recommend that we should have one and a half times the current assets to the current liabilities. Okay, so let's have a look at maybe what we've got here in these cups then. Yeah, yeah. So if I actually go like this. So this is fairly full, this one. Yeah. And this is about half full, and and that's about the right proportion. Um, the the concerning thing would be if I just empty some of this out here. You know, if if we had insufficient um, current assets to cover the current liabilities, we might struggle to pay our bills. And that's basically all it shows. A lot of students get worried about it, but that's all it shows. Well, so it, so it tells us basically if a business is profitable or not. Nothing to do with profits. It's oh, all right. about paying bills. So it's it's would you say that's, is that a common mistake students make? It is. I mean, when you look at profitability, you want to look at return on capital, and that's the main formula for profit. But this is just how can you pay your bills? Have you got enough liquid assets to cover current liabilities? And as I say, the textbook recommends 1.5 to 1 as a typical ratio, somewhere between 1.5 and 2 to 1. Now, if I... Just go on a little bit further. There is a better test of liquidity than this. There's a better one than this one? There is a better one, and some people call it the quick ratio. But it's called the acid test ratio. And okay. What that does, it, it basically says, with our, with our most liquid assets here, remember these are current assets, so they include stock. Stock, receivables, and cash. Yeah, receipt, uh, I mean, stock or inventory, it, it's a hard asset to turn into cash. And so if we take that out of the equation... So if we do current assets minus stock, or we just do liquid assets. So our liquid assets would really just be cash. Cash and receivables. And receivables very soon going to turn into cash, isn't it? Yeah. So what the textbook would say with this ratio is you need about equal. You need about, let's just make that level. You need about one proportion of liquid assets to one proportion of current liabilities. So a pound for a pound? A pound for a pound. For every pound's worth of you, you owe, you've got a pound in liquid assets. And if, you, if you've got that sort of position, you should be fine. In reality, a lot of, a lot of companies will actually operate with slightly less. Yeah, I was going to say, because the, don't uh, Tesco have an extremely low current ratio and asset test ratio? But how is it that they haven't had maybe cash flow problems that other firms have had? Well, the thing is with a company like Tesco, they, they might, when the balance sheet's drawn up, they might have less liquid assets to their current liabilities. They do have a lot of current liabilities, and let's let's face it, you know, they have so many suppliers that they owe money to. So they have a huge and they've got and, and people who they give varying um, uh, who who they who they've been given generous 
credit, credit terms. terms. That's right. Yeah. So, so Tesco, you know, we're paying lots of people back for their vegetables and all, all their stock um, on credit. So they have a huge amount of current liabilities. And when the balance sheet's drawn up, they don't quite, it looks like they don't have enough liquid assets. But the thing is, every day, Tesco have got liquidity coming into the business. But remember, the balance sheet's only on one day. It doesn't tell you the story over a period of time. It tells you like a snapshot at one point in a year. At one point, that's right. So, um, you know, because it's so cash rich and, and, and liquidity is constantly flowing into the business through the tills, con constant cash coming in. They never have a problem. So you would say that businesses that turn over large amounts of inventory receive a lot of cash payments, which a firm like Tesco would probably can manage with a, a, a current ratio that's slightly on the unhealthy side. That's right. Yeah. So you've got to look at the type of business. Uh, retailers in general will be taking cash in on a daily basis so they can operate with somewhere between maybe 0.3 and 0.7 of these to, to this. But the textbook recommends, let's just go back to it, about one to one. Somewhere between 0.7 and 1 to 1. And that's for the acid and test ratio. That's the acid test ratio. And that'll be comfortable. So that's all it means. It's, it's can you pay your bills? These are bills that need to be paid. Um, and, and it's just a, a good test of liquidity. This is the best one, really. The, the amount of liquid assets to current liabilities. So really, so if I'm thinking liquidity, I'm thinking cash flow. Very similar, yeah. yeah. People, people talk about liquidity, cash flow, working capital. It, it's all very similar stuff. And I guess if a student can use words like that in their analysis, and that's probably considered high level when they can start using words like working capital. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, just to summarize, uh, this is probably the best test of liquidity is the um, acid test ratio. And if you want to do the current ratio, it was current assets to current liabilities. And it's just understanding that the typical ratio for this one is about 1.5 to 1. And the typical ratio that firms want to achieve for this is about 1 to 1. Somewhere between 0.7 and 1 to 1. Okay. i tell you what, Mark. Um, I think we need to get out of here, don't we? Because uh, I think oh, Zach's teaching a lesson here. Absolutely. Back in here and, come and to be honest, he's an economist, not a business person. So he'd never understand our use of... Uh, get no chance talking about No, I wouldn't. Right. Let's go here. Okay. Cheers, Mark. Bye-bye.